fact is when you uh, look at life, let alone look at the scripture, you do so through a cultural lens. All of us have been influenced totally by the culture in which we were raised. And for any of us, including myself, who have lived internationally, you become very, very aware of the impact of culture as it relates to how you see the world. And traveling internationally now, as I do all of the time, especially now with Africa and India and uh, uh, Central America in my horizon, uh, I'm seeing more and more evidence of the impact of culture in terms of how we perceive truth. Well, uh, Joseph uh, Amaral, has written a book called Understanding Jesus, Cultural Insights into the Words and Deeds of Christ. I understand Joe has been here before. This is my first time with him. Thanks for coming, Joe. I'm fascinated with this topic in that I lived in Jerusalem for seven years mm -hmm. and uh, I'm very aware of the impact of culture and, uh, and, the, and the Old Testament and New Testament scriptures. Why did you write the book? Uh, for the reason that you're saying, that a lot of people come to the scripture uh, without that cultural understanding. So Canadians come with a Canadian, you know, predisposition, Americans and, you know, whoever else. And uh, I think sometimes we allow Hollywood uh, too much to affect how we see Jesus and how we see the Bible. Um, anybody who's seen movies about the life of Jesus recognize that he always has a, a British accent and his disciples are always British and he has this dirty blonde flowing hair and, and, and blue eyes. Yeah. And I think a lot of Christians who love God, who love Jesus, who love his word, um, don't understand that in order to best understand the Bible, you have to understand not just the original culture, but the original author and the audience to whom he intended that book to be read by. And I've met so many Christians who have a difficult time understanding, let's say, a certain Bible verse or parable. And what happens is we put meaning into the parable based on our cultural you know, right. bias and background that maybe that meaning shouldn't be there. And so we spiritualize some of the, the stories and really the truth is so obvious when you understand the culture in which it was intended. You know, I, I want to get right into it. Um, your book, uh, Understanding Jesus, Cultural Insights into the Words and Deeds of Christ, mm -hmm. uh, is, a, is a fascinating read. Um, but you, um, you give some great examples, but here's, here's an example of um, history and culture and uh, mm -hmm. an everyday event. Mm -hmm. A story <coughs> that's recorded in, in the Gospels, uh, Mark and Matthew talk about it, of a woman who had an issue of blood. Oh, yes, yes. Now, first of all, when I, when I read that story, I think of uh, Ethiopia, talking about culture, uh, where I have been several times over mm -hmm. the past few years, and the huge issue there of uh, fistulas. Mm -hmm. these, are, these are women who uh, are impregnated when they're very young, uh, bear children when they're 12 and 13 years of age. Uh, the baby is bigger than their little frame can handle and they have internal mm. tearing mm. and um, live with this awful reality of uh, urine and feces mm. uh, just dribbling out of their bodies through what's called a fistula. Now I don't know if that was the case or not with this woman, but I, th mm -hmm. I think of that when I, when mm. I, when I read this, uh, this story. And she, according to the scripture, thought, uh, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Mm -hmm. And she reaches out and touches the hem of his garment. Right. What's going on there? Yeah. Um, our audience is predominantly Canadian. Mm -hmm. And so when we read a story that it says that she touched the hem of his garment, I mean, we think of the hem on the clothes that we wear today, whether it's the hem of a lady's dress or the pants we're wearing today, they have hems. And if, if that's all it is, then what's so special about the hem? Well, we go back to the original language, first of all, to the Greek language. And we understand the word there that's used is the word kraspaden. And kraspaden doesn't mean hem. It actually means a twisted piece of wool in the shape of a tassel. Now, you're very familiar with yeah, these. Yeah, no, this, this, this is a prayer shawl. That's right. And uh, in fact, you know, I almost brought my own prayer shawl. And I, I rushed out of my house this morning and didn't <laughs> bring it. And so I, I come into the green room and there you are. Yeah. And you've, 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 got, you've got one. Now, the one I have, whenever I I'm in the, was in the synagogue when I lived mm -hmm. in Jerusalem, I used to, uh, used to wear it. And uh, some, some, this is, a, this is a kind of an abbreviated version of a prayer shawl. Yeah, uh, it's a personal size. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, mine, uh, mine is um, almost like a cloak. But here's, here's the deal mm -hmm. right here. Th this is, this is uh, the tassel on the corner of the prayer shawl. Now tell us about this. Yeah, that's key to understanding 
the story because the Bible says that she touched the hem of his garment, yeah. or so the crust paid in of the garment. And people ask, well, how do you know that Jesus was wearing a prayer shawl? I mean, wasn't he a Christian? Didn't he wear regular clothes, you know? <laughs> Excuse me, Jesus was a Jew. <laughs> You know, you and I can agree on that, but you know, you'd be amazed. You know, I, I travel a lot in this country as well, into churches, into seminars on Hebraic roots and things. And I usually start off the day by saying, how many people here understand that Jesus was not a Christian? And they look at you shocked. So what do you mean? Well, he was a Jew. Well, what does that mean? Well, the command in the book of Numbers is that every Jewish male would wear uh, a shawl. He would wear a garment. And on the four corners of that garment, he would place that there. Uh, Numbers 15, chapter, um, yeah, 15, verses 37, 38, talk about every male putting these these uh, tassels on the corners of the garments with a blue cord through it. Yeah, the it. blue cord right here. That, that you know, uh, I was surprised you had one with a blue cord because uh, th that's not common anymore. No, they're they're very hard to find, yeah. and so in the Greek, the word for garment or hem was was twisted piece of wool, yeah. and now. In the Hebrew, you go to it, and it says that you are to place kanaf on the corner of the garment. And kanaf is a very interesting Hebrew word, because it doesn't actually mean tassel. No. <laughs> no. And so you say, well, why God, why did he choose that word? And it's actually the word um, wing. Wing, that's right. In Hebrew, like the wings of an angel, the, the wing. wings of a bird. Yeah, yeah. And so these are called um, now the wings of the garment. And so, you know, when you see um, a Jewish man whether you're flying to Israel or you're driving around in Jerusalem, wherever you go, you'll see these men at the wall praying, <coughs> excuse me, and they're covered, they're under the wings uh, of the garment. And, you know, th there's a beautiful psalm that everybody loves to read. Right, we all know very well Psalm 91 that talks about, you know, uh, being in the shelter of the Most High, in the shadow of the Almighty. And this is written by a shepherd, right? Yeah. David. And if you've been to the uh, Judean wilderness, you know how hot it is there and there's no protection. But if you had your shawl with you and, and you had it pegged up or you had it strung up in a tree, it would provide a beautiful shelter, give you a beautiful shade, give you yeah. a time of rest, you know, from, from the heat of the day. It's like a sukkah, a tabernacle. I, exactly. It, so, so the Bible says that, um, that you can rest in, in the shelter or in the shadow of the Almighty. By the and way, my mic was in the shelter of, uh, <laughs> of, the, of, of my shawl, and I think I, my sound was muffled a bit there. But you know, um, yeah. he, he will cover you with his feathers, and under, under his wings you will find refuge. Now, sometimes yeah. when I've been to um, uh, Orthodox synagogues, you know, not, you know, not all synagogues are created equal. You know, some, That's right. Some, some are reformed, some are reconstructionists, some are conservatives, some are Orthodox. But uh, there, there is a, a point in the service mm -hmm. in the Orthodox synagogue when the, uh, the koinim, the, uh, the members of the synagogue there who, uh, whose name is Cohen or can trace their roots to the Kohenim, which is the priestly priests, tribe, yeah. will take the shawl and they put it right over their head like this. Mm -hmm. 